people ask me, you know, what is the recipe? How do you cook a whole carcass? And this goes for being a spit, like a pig on a spit, or a lamb butterflied on a cross. You know, on the spit, you're obviously rotating 360 degrees and applying the heat to the entire circumference of the pig. Uh, or a lamb that is butterflied and it's just flipped uh, one side to the other. Um, the, the, the front side and the back side. Uh, in every case, I feel like as close as you can get to delineating a recipe is low and slow. That's it. How yeah. seriously are you going to take low and slow? Mm -hmm. And uh, the reason that that is important is because the most common error in whole animal roasting is the charring of the outside and the utter uncooking of the inside. And so the outside can be nice and browned and looks really good. And then you cut into it and it's like, oh, it's raw. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. not really cooked in here. And that is by far and away, by far and away the most common mistake. Which is different than what we were saying before, which is you do want charred on the outside and kind of juicy on the inside. But that that's more like individual bites. You don't actually want a full pig like burnt on the outside and then raw no. on the belly. Well, something. and I would say it's juicy on the inside, not because it's rare. Right. So here's the, the cool trick. Yeah. It's really hard to overcook a whole carcass over the uh, heat of fire um, if you're cooking slowly. It's hard to overcook it. Okay. Because that long, slow application of heat and the sheer thickness of a whole carcass keeps everything moist. There's so all the fat is intact. So to, certainly with young lambs, you can dry it out. That's kind of easy to do. Mm -hmm. But if you got a fat old sheep and pretty much a pig of almost any age, unless something really young like a suckling pig, um, it's really hard to dry those things out. And the moisture, the interior moisture, doesn't come from it being a low temperature. It comes from it being braised in its own fat on the inside. Mm -hmm. And all of that water not escaping out of the severed ends of muscles, which happens when you butcher a carcass because it's still whole. So it's boiling in the water that is in the meat and in the fat that is amongst the lean of the flesh. That's why it's tender and juicy on the inside. So when I think of cooking right. an animal, I'm thinking of <clears throat> low and slow, knowing that um, it's uh, I, I'm you're trying to achieve two things: the crispification of the outside and cooking of the inside, which means it's really tempting to go for one at the expense of the other, particularly the crispification of the outside. And that is really when things go bad. Yeah, because we've heard of horror stories. Lee. Well, and then I shouldn't say they're horror because people always end up having a good time. And um, and they might, like, if something does go bad, they'll just, like, chop it up and throw it all on a grill. Yes. You know, and that's that's fine. Yes. But what does happen is they ha actually have achieved burntness on the outside and it's not even cooked, uh -huh. like, not even warm uh -huh. on the inside. I think that's what you're talking about. Yeah, that's bad news. Yeah. And so what I think about when I'm roasting to that end is delay the browning of the exterior as long as possible. Ah. That's what that means. So basically I flip the animal if it's on a cross or turn it if it's on a spit as frequently as is necessary to prevent it from browning on that part that is exposed to the direct heat. So um, sometimes that means I flip it every five minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, and or sometimes it's every 10 minutes like I, I don't even time it you mm -hmm. know at all it's mm -hmm. just I want to prevent the browning I don't want to see it if it's browning in like 30 seconds you need to tune the fire way down and increase the rate of your rotations or flippage of the splayed lamb mm -hmm. so delay the browning mm -hmm. because that is allowing the heat to penetrate all the way to the bone heat up the bones, radiate off the bones, cook the inside. And then if that's all you're focusing on is cooking the inside, by the time it's pullable and fallen apart and spoonable under that shoulder blade, it'll be perfectly browned on the outside. Right, without having to t whack up the heat. Yeah, so I guess one way to think yeah. of it is you don't have to brown the outside. That's think true. about, okay. focus on cooking the inside 
and the outside will brown itself. It'll take care of itself. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, now, there are a couple exceptions to this, and these are things that you can avoid in by by being uh, judicious in the animal sele- you select. So, it's hard for me to say this, but fat animals are not ideal for spit roasting. Mm. Uh, it's it's blasphemous to say fat animals are unideal in any sense, but <laughs> to this end. If you have a pig with two and a half inches of back fat, oh, right. you're going to use three quarters of your wood fuel and three quarters of your time melting that fat cap before the heat barely even gets to the flesh. Mm-hmm. I mean, just think about that. You have two and a half inches of lard to make and melt, yeah. which you can if you, yeah. if you, you know, you time for it and you put a big hotel pan with deep sides underneath the spit the Mm -hmm. pig to catch the dripping fat and then you can throw in your super eggy dough to make your um yorkshire pudding Mm -hmm. that's what official yorkshire pudding is it's cooked in the blazing hot oil of a spit roasted animal um so that's one reason to avoid the fat animals the little lard pigs that's those are tricky those are the ones that are the most demanding Mm -hmm.